on their lifestyle. The other thing that I think organizations like ours are trying to do is think about ways that we can effectively give access to people with information. So uh, this issue, Peter, that you just alluded to, how do we get information from your local practitioner, the local HEMONC, up to the center of excellence and get the patient from point A to point B is really critical. Yeah, no, I, I agree that that's, 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 that's really a, a, a key thing here. I also think that one of the things that increasingly may be facilitated um, by trial designs will be for some of these therapies, for people to actually get the therapy in one location. Yeah. They'll be there for the initial period of time and then be able to go back to their community right. setting and have a, a, a community hematologist, oncologist, or other provider, depending on the disease, actually do the follow-up. And we're, we're very, we're increasingly amenable to these uh, kinds of designs. It's, it's facilitated by the electronic medical record, um, which hopefully someday will become a little more seamless than it is now, but it, it is facilitated by that. And it's also facilitated by the fact that outcomes assessments yeah. are becoming somewhat more standardized in these things. So um, hopefully that will make people's lives easier because that, that is, a, it is a concern. Going back and forth to a clinical trial site if it's a distance can be an issue. And if someone just has to be there for two weeks and then doesn't have to come back, it's a lot easier if someone has to be there for two weeks and then comes back every two to four weeks afterwards for a year or two afterwards. Yeah, and we've, we've taken such strategies, and Jody, I think you mentioned it too. It's really how do we make it easier for patients yeah. to be part of the trial. Sure. Some things you may need to be there, but for other things yeah. that we can extend, we are certainly trying to do that. And then also, you know, I think there's opportunities to really look at referral patterns, you know, to see where patients really are coming into centers, where then we can begin to see if there is additional research centers or you know, even community practice settings yeah. willing to participate. So we're thinking about it on all those fronts. And, and I think, Peter, you said it really, I think, really very well. It does depend on the product. It does exactly. depend on the therapy. And by the time we get to the phase three randomized trials, we should have pretty good insight, Indeed. to be honest, yeah. of yeah. the safety and the ability to do that. And some products do lend themselves much easier to this than others. Yeah. But if I, I sort of pull this together, I think it's really critical for patients to have these conversations, both, both with their provider, as, as Peter referred to, but also to have a kind of dialogue uh, with other advocacy groups and with the, the pharmaceutical companies, the sponsors of these, of these products, because there is help out there to, to deal with this.